Unboxing a donation from renowned Gothic fashion designer Cambriel. I recently received a box in the mail from my friend Cambriel, who is a well-known designer. Her work was featured in an exhibit at the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And she's made clothing for all kinds of celebrities, everyone from comedian Margaret Cho to author Neil Gaiman, just all around cool people. So when she contacted me and asked if she could donate some fabric and clothing to the department where I work and the theater for which I work, of course I said yes. And this box with its really ornate label here arrived and now I'm ready to open it. So let's see what's inside together. I'm gonna put this onto the floor so that I can take things out of it and spread them out here on this table. So the first thing in here is a piece of purple tissue paper. And there is a little card from Cambriel that says, Rachel, greetings. I hope this finds you well and you'll enjoy going through the bits and bobs. Some are especially for you. Yay. Others might be fun to have on hand in class in brighter days, but please keep any for personal use that you'd like. Much love, Cambrielle. Now she and I have known each other, I don't want to say longer than there's been an internet, but we definitely knew each other as text on a screen before we met in person. And then we were both uh, living in Boston in the same window of time when Cambriel was starting to really succeed with her clothing brand, and I was working as a DJ. This picture was taken in 1998 in one of the DJ booths at Man Ray Nightclub in Cambridge, Massachusetts. A little note from a friend to a friend. Now the first thing in here, what is this? <laughs> oh yes, it's a garment. It's a, it's a finished garment. It's got her label in it. A jacket, which actually feels like it fits me pretty well. I'll have to put this on a dress form so I can really get a look at what the style of it is. Sure like the fabrics it's made out of though. Oh, it's a beautiful little hat Ooh, and something in the hat. Louise original. This, this is sort of evocative of Cambriel's style, particularly this ornamental swirling braid slash soutache trim. It is possible that this is a hat that she remade or retrimmed for a fashion show or something, or it's possible that all of this trim is original to the hat. Either way, it's definitely a good example of what it is in great condition for a vintage hat. And I think it will be excellent in our collection at Playmakers Repertory Company. This was inside of it. Jewelers on Main, it's a little velvet bag. And it has, oh, some earrings. Oh, well, those are pretty cool. I don't have pierced ears, so these will also go directly into um, the stock at work. Oh, this appears to be something, some vintage lace work. Oh, they're sleeves. They're beautiful sleeves taken off of a, an antique bodice, I suppose, or perhaps never put onto it in the first place. They're this sort of diaphanous silk knit that has some lace insertion. And I will actually be taking these to work and showing them to our archivist if they think that they're valuable enough examples of what they are, even though it's not a complete garment to accession into the clothing archive at work. This is beautiful. This is an antique plume. 
these are egret feathers. They're exceptionally rare and they're very fragile and they're an endangered bird. So they become an interesting um, quandary to figure out what to do with them. I have a selection of vintage and antique feather ornaments for hats that are part of the collection at UNC Chapel Hill Playmakers. And this will go into that. They are studied by scholars. Someone has crocheted a kind of a, a shawl-like thing. I originally thought this might be um, cassette tape. It's too wide for that. That might be something that I would use in millinery myself. Now this is a type of buckram that is a lightweight buckram and you can purchase this kind of buckram at fabric stores. Most of them around the country like Joanne's fabrics will sell. If you ask for buckram, this is the type of buckram that they'll give you. And that's definitely something that we would use it at work or I might use it here in my millinery studio. Oh, a couple of things. <laughs> Surged Garments in Minutes. It's a book that will go into the library at work. We have a costume shop library with all sorts of sewing and costume history books in it. A promotional card for an exhibit that was held at Arcadia Gallery in New York, New York for a, an artist named Eric Hammer. Here is something in a plastic bag. Now, I don't want to pull them all out, but it's little pieces of fabric. So that will be something that will actually, I'll take it to work and we'll have a work study go through and, and evaluate um, what's usable and what's too small, perhaps. Something in a Ziploc bag. Oh. oh, this is nice. This is a piece of antique beadwork. I'm guessing a collar piece that's been cut off of an existing garment and, and salvaged because of the artistry of the beadwork that exists here. Some seed bead motifs of flowers and then this sort of lattice work of the black sequins and then there's an embroidered piece here of concentric circles that's quite lovely as well so at the theater where i work in the costume mfa program where i teach we have bins of different types of antique lace and beadwork that are sorted by color and then by um, whether it's yardage of trim or partial garment motifs like this. I, I hesitate to say because I'm not really the one who is in charge of the intake um, of that type of donation, but this is definitely going to get passed on to them first to be preserved and studied potentially. The next thing in the box is a little drawstring bag. Birds and flowers and engraved labels on it. But it seems like there's a piece of jewelry in here. Yes. Oh, interesting. It is a pearl necklace. You know, thanks to the pandemic, I don't have any occasion to leave the house and go to a social occasion. But in practical terms, my job is very active and there's a lot of machinery that I use. And a long necklace like that, I have run the risk of it getting sucked into the flywheel of a machine or something of that sort, which would be a nightmare. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't keep it possibly for when there's an opening night party again. The jury's out on that. I might keep it. The next thing is an origami bat made out of this lovely brocade print. Not paper and not fabric, 
it seems like it's a, a mylar, perhaps. It's metallic. That's kind of cute. Oh, wow. <laughs> so here is another one of these fancy, fantastic feather ornaments. Stripped, looks like maybe rooster feathers. And then this brush of what seems to be egret feathers. They're black, so if they are egret, they would have had to be dyed because egrets are white. And, and this is not me speaking as an expert here. This is me speaking as somebody who's having deja vu. I feel like I've heard another milliner refer to this as bird of paradise, this pseudo egret stuff. Um, but I could be totally wrong there. Uh, we still have quite a lot of stuff in here. A great big zipline bag with a manila envelope in it. Two manila envelopes. It's a collection of scissors. Oh, this is nice. So there's ergonomic uh, pinking shears. And ergonomic snips. And then a tiny pair of non-ergonomic snips. So I have a feeling this is maybe more tools. Oh, yes. Hair cutting thinning scissors. That's exciting. Oh, wow. Oh, they're gingers. This is a really nice pair of shears that she has donated that has a lock to the hinge. I could be mistaken, but I think that's a design that Ginger has discontinued. Very exciting scissor donation here. When Camriel and I first began corresponding about this donation, this so in hair canvas was what she initially contacted me about, asking if I wanted basically the end of the bolt. So I'm assuming that it's something that perhaps she used to use in a prior collection that has now been retired or discontinued and she had like the bolt end of it. There is a fairly substantial length of the sew in hair canvas. And this is really exciting because this spring semester, one of my colleagues will be teaching a tailoring class that this would definitely get used for. So this will be extremely useful this spring and moving forward. I'm gonna throw it on the list. So this appears to be a, a bag of, well, there's some safety pins and there's a corded tassel ornament, but then, oh, and there's a comb, but the majority of this bag is buttons, mostly black, some gray and white and gold. Um, a print for an artist named Daniel Martin Diaz, and it appears to, on the back, it has an artistic statement about his philosophy of art making and imagery and so forth. And this, wow, there's a little feather. It's a beautiful purple, little purple feather with black stripes on it. I'm keeping this one. A set tape holder. Now that's an antique for sure. And, but the cassette tape holder does not have a cassette in it. And this, a magnet for Cambriel's clothing line, and something else wrapped up in paper. A crescent, and, and this is actually, these are cut and engraved on a piece of wood. And this artist, it's signed on the back, Cambriel by Daria H. And this artist has taken a picture of Cambriel herself and etched it into this little ornament. The last of the Ziploc bags. Yes, this is all trim. So there's some, some beaded trim motifs 
It looked like they've been cut off of a lace ground. So, so it seems that this container is of, of smaller pieces of trim in the way that the previous, um, there was a, another bag that had that larger motif that had been taken off of an existing bodice, but was clearly still the shape of that pattern piece in the garment. And this is more trim and yardage and bits of fabric and bits of beading that are not still in anything resembling a garment-like form. So that's the extent of what was in this amazing box from Cambrielle. So excited about the variety of different things that she sent. Thank you so much for unboxing this with me. I'm very excited that the next time I make a video, it'll be 2021. So I will see you around. Take care, be safe, wear a mask, be kind to other people. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notification of new content, and please join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern for my live studio stream.